How had uh, the chambers become part of the onslaught? Um, well basically, um, Andy Rotter Davis is unable to commit to any kind of touring commitments at the moment, so we've had to get um, somebody else in for the past 18 months, I believe. Something like mm -hmm. I mean, Lee's been yeah. uh, he's been doing a great job. Um, we're still unsure of what's happening with Andy. I spoke to him um, yesterday, actually. Um, and he's still got some personal issues going on, so we don't know if he's returning, if he will ever return, to be honest. But it's something that we kind of feel we need to resolve before we make the next album, um, definitely. So I mean, we're going to give Andy a little bit more time to see where he goes and uh, mm -hmm. take it from there before we release album number seven. You mentioned uh, a new album. Can you tell me more about that? What's the situation about that? <laughs> Uh, it's only very early stages at the moment. Uh, V16 has only been out still seven, eight months, and we still got a lot of promotion to do for that record. Um, just basically working on the, the skeleton and the framework for the, the new album. I've got all the song titles in place and kind of lots of little ideas on store for the songs and the feelings and the, and the vocal parts and some lyrics and stuff, you know. So it's uh, very much in work is in progress, we're, we're, we're on our way. Sounds good. Um, so, uh, by the way, how, why did you name the last album Six, apart from it being the sixth album? Yeah, uh, there's a load of little different things. I mean, if you look on the front, I mean, technically it's saying 666 on the front. But, yeah. uh, we didn't want to be overly satanic, you know, so we it was a six album and then we obviously used the, the 666 a lot with things and we just kind of linked together like that and everybody seems to think it was quite unimaginative but <laughs> um, no, I mean, it was a little ideas and for me it works uh, it just seemed to come at a time when a lot of bands were using numbers for albums didn't mm. yeah well I, I guess when we first started on the probably on the first two albums it was kind of you know the um, the kind of satanic stuff it was um, Obviously, it's not true, is it? Come on, so, but the the way we use the references now is is more in a, in a in a representation of evil, if you like. Um, it's more kind of all our lyrics are more factual now. Obviously, the, the first two albums were kind of mythological, or you know, for want of a better word, and um, and um, fiction. But all the stuff we write about since we've come back is very much fact based on what's going on in the world. Um, like a social commentary so. Yeah, exactly. Sorry about that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's, as you said, it's a very much um, representation of what's going on in the world today. So we, we use the any kind of satanic references as, as the evil part. You know? mm -hmm. Okay, um, back to um to Lee. Um, well, when Lee was born, uh, I noticed that Power From Hell had already been released. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so doesn't this age gap between him and you as the band's two guitarists um, uh, cause any problem, especially when you're playing live? No, not at all. Um, I'm still a big kid myself, so <laughs> I probably act younger than him anyway sometimes. But um, No, I mean, um, I don't really notice. He's obviously got uh, a lot of energy, which gives us a kick at the backside, you know, so we all got to get on a, raise our game a little bit, but no, I mean, he's, he's fitted in pretty well, um, so he's doing a good job. He's, he's a great guitar player, yeah, he is a great guitar, guitar player, last night in the pub, we, had, we, had, we both had a couple of beers, I think, and uh, we had a bit of a heart to heart, it was quite good, and uh, yeah, he said, he said to me, I, would, I, I hear you call me a great guitar player to someone, <laughs> he got quite emotional. Because I, I, I don't say, say to his face, you're a great guitar player, man. But he's great, he's good. He's great on stage. He's just, uh, yeah, full, full of energy. He's nice said he does, uh, yeah, he's, because we're, uh, yeah, elder, thrash gentleman like this now. And yeah, but, 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 but yeah, it just gives us a kick up the arse, you know, and uh, we got up our game. Okay, here's more for you, say. Um, when you had, um Joined the band, I believe you had sung in a lineup that featured the ex-vocalist Paul Mahoney, who went to play bass. 
No. No? Not true. Not, not true. Any, my, when I first joined the band in 1986, I had done nothing prior to joining Elspot. Um, well, I said nothing. I had not done any gigs. My, um, I was just doing a, a, a hobby, just doing covers with my brother and a couple of his friends. Doing some purple songs and Zeppelin songs. So, but I songs. thought with the non slot, uh, Paul Mahoney was vocalist now, before you joined? Yes, before you joined. Yeah. That's yeah. what I meant. Oh, right, so, I when see. you joined non slot, uh, Paul went to play bass. Well, Paul moved on to play bass, that's right. Yeah, so, yeah. what I wanted to ask is uh, at that time, did, did, how did you feel uh, as a Paul watching over your shoulders? No, I don't think I know. I, I, I never felt like that. No, I just, no, just got on with it. I just. I, th I, th I, th I think um, he was pretty happy with the yeah. with the situation. Yeah, wasn't he? Th there was never any complaints from him, you know. No. He, I, th I think he realised the band needed, you know, a, a, a more of a metal vocalist, so someone from a rock background, to really, to sort of uh, push the band on. Mm. Uh, and uh, around that same time, I think um, a lot of most of members had to change the instruments. <laughs> almost yes. everyone. Oh, can you tell me about what had happened at, the, at that time? Well, yeah, like I said, um, Paul Mahoney, uh, he was a bass player anyway, so um, we we wanted to add a second guitarist, um, and it, it was the obvious thing to try and keep within the ranks of what we had, rather than um, bringing extra people in, you know. Um, Jay Stark was capable of playing some, some guitar. And as I said, Paul Mahoney was a bass player, so when when Cy joined, it was just a, it was fortunate for us that we had the personnel to be able to do that without bringing any new faces in. Um, despite um, being a, a good album, there is perhaps some, you know, negativity linked to the album Search of Sanity. So how do, how what are your feelings about that album and performing it live? Um, yeah, it's um, for me, it's not. A typical onslaught album at all. Mm -hmm. It's far too polished, um, clean, and it's. I mean, there's some great songs on it. Don't get me yeah. wrong, but um, it just doesn't. If you put that on com compared to Six or Sounds of Violence, it's, it's, it's two different bands, mm -hmm. a million miles apart. So what we're, what we're aiming to do is obviously, Sly was in the band when all those songs were written. Mm -hmm. So the plan is to re-record in search of Santi huh? with Sykes. So obviously, the fans want to hear that album, and we want to put that album out the way it should have sounded. You know, so we're going to make that album in line with how all sorts sound today, and how I think that album should have sounded okay. back in 1989. You know, so yeah, is that something uh, going to happen soon? Yeah, um, I'm hoping to get the label too. I spoke to him basically about it already and what I would like to do is possibly have it as a bonus disc for the next album because uh -huh. that would be kind of cool. And what about um, when you listen to albums like The Force and Power From Hell and then you listen to Sounds of Violence and Six, so did you hear the same band? Um, yeah, of course there's they're still, um, they're still the same influences there. Um, obviously, the, the musicianship has improved greatly. Definitely, yes, um, yeah. And the, the productions have improved greatly. But I mean, there's still. I mean, the Force is a, a great album. A um, little bit rough around the edges, maybe, but um, again, still got some great songs on. And those songs still really stand up in the live set, alongside the songs from Six, Killing Peace, and, and Sounds of Violence.